What up traders? What up investors? Ken here from Dyslexia Investor. We're starting just a tad bit earlier just to kind of get things up and running here and make sure uh, everyone's able to join and so forth and just kind of go start going through some stocks and just kind of chit chat about the market uh, and just have some fun and kind of go uh, uh, discuss charts, stocks, uh, some of the the charts from the viewers, uh, our stock tickers and so forth. And we'll just have a lot of fun uh, regarding around that basis. And again, most likely gonna be going off topic and talking about other random things. So um, yeah, so let's go ahead and just kind of jump into the old jazz of things. Uh, what normally I like to do on a Sunday or the weekend of some kind, uh, I always wanna go look at the weekly chart of some uh, of the overall indexes so i usually just pull up spy or qqq depending on which one and which one i feel like typing first um so spy of course you know that's a spider etf we hit a all-time high of this week or sorry a past week and again this is a, th a weekly chart going past going the past the last three uh, years um, and of course a lot of things have happened in three years we, we, we literally went through a pandemic uh, we had a uh, almost like a uh, an over uh, uh, zealous Fed that was trying to raise rates too fast uh, and if you remember going to 18 to 19 um, that's that this little pattern here let me kind of get the old uh, the marker out here kind of, of course this is the that pandemic that we all still know and kind of uh, ingrained in our mind and of course this is the the slower down uh, tune that we've seen here before where it was due to uh, the Federal Reserve uh, being a little bit more rambunctious uh, and kind of not uh, uh, going a little bit too uh, too hard on uh, potential raising of stuff um, on those side points you can see here those are pretty large down moves again uh, the the moral of the story with this is is like we just don't know what can happen in the market right and, and i want to really uh have that slightly ingrained in your brain uh meaning that you can do all the perfect things in the world you can risk manage perfectly you can execute trades perfectly but the one thing you can't do perfectly or do at all is predict where the market will be going or or know where the market will be going with any certainty uh and and that i think that was a lesson that i that it took me forever to learn in the sense of uh the market doesn't care about if you're short doesn't care about your long it just does its own thing and, and there's no rhyme or reason behind it that we can Kind of, kind of put tags on it sometimes and like oh the market went down today because what jerome powell said oh the market went down because apple and tech was going lower oh the market went down because the 10-year note uh went up and people were feared of inflation and things like that and it just there's trends there's secular trends there's uh trends within trends and so forth it's it just uh the first and foremost uh, I know a lot of people are somewhat more experienced traders, but then we also do get a slew of traders that are fairly new and, and then have just started trading earlier 2021 or actually started trading during the pandemic, uh, trading their stimmy checks as they call them. Uh, I'm not gonna make fun of the Robin Hood folks and things like that. I think it's a great endeavor for people to want and to learn investing. It's not easy. Um, it's not for everyone at the same note. Um, but yeah, just I wanted to kind of make that little uh, public service announcement on that um, and uh, and really kind of understand that uh, the market a little bit better on the granular level on that sense. Um, Kelly D, what's up, my friend? Uh, Ken, what's your thoughts on Chewy thinking of selling some weekly puts for earnings? Oh, it has earnings this week? Nice. Let's take a look. So Chewy, uh, interesting. Okay, so they have earnings coming out. It looks like the 10th. Um, after, so the 10th would be, was that Thursday? Yeah, Thursday after the bell. Um, let me, let's look at the options market itself. I want to make sure there's a couple things that you need to look at if you want to sell premium uh, particular. So I'm going to swing over Tastyworks. So Tastyworks is with the trading platform that I use. So if you're looking at the weekly options, they do a fantastic job. They're saying a move of plus or minus of $6.50 uh, 
Um, think or swim might be a little bit different. Different. They might give a little bit larger range of numbers. Yeah, they're saying they're saying seven fifty. Um, I kind of just do the difference. So let's just call it seven dollars. Um, so the expected move is about seven dollars here coming in uh, that day or that week. Um, so th there's different ways, Kelly, that you can kind of place this trade. You can come in tomorrow and just sell like the sixty-seven or sixty-eight dollar. Uh, uh, put here. Um, of course, that's going to be taking. I don't think this is on my. Hold on one second. I got to change this. Yeah, it is on my. Okay, it is on the margin account, so I, I am able to 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 take that risk. Um, you can see here on the margin account. Of course, if Chewy just goes to zero, um, I'm out six thousand eight six thousand seven hundred dollars. Um, but uh, we're talking about selling at like a a wider uh, angle so we could look at this so the depending on how you want to look at it Kelly some people like to just go out and just sell it come Monday or Tuesday or maybe potentially when there's a dip in the market again timing is very difficult it's a weekly option so you know that that theta decay is pretty severe um, so you have to be very well aware uh, uh, of if it does go south, it can go south really fast because with the, the theta decay and the delta, uh, it can really move because again, earnings can make these a really irrational trading t times and that really can underlying uh, uh, really hurt the, uh, the movement in that stock. Uh, another way to look at it, um, if you wanted to um, execute the trade the day of or the last hour or the last 30 minutes going into the close. So again, we said it comes out the 10th. So if, you, if you're coming into Thursday and actually for some whatever reason, Chewy stock announced that they sold some bad dog food or did something, whatever happened, and the stock actually opens down to 70 come Monday, and you're like, oh snap, I already had the 68 or something one put spread, and there's still somewhat a large expected move, that can kind of create a, 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 a an itchy, sticky situation. Um, so you would potentially, uh, depending on what your risk tolerance is, is um, potentially even, you can look at the 11th, um, there is not too much of, of uh, liquidity, as I can see here, um, there's only a couple hundred and a couple of these contracts. It's not terrible. The spreads, of course, the market's not open. They're not that wide. They're $10 or 10 cents wide. That's kind of severe. But even bringing it to the monthly expiration, you're really opening the door to a lot more potential. And you're giving yourself a little bit more time on, my, on your hand, Kelly. So you're again, you're looking, you have a substantially more open interest, the 70 and the 65. So you can even just turn it into a credit spread. Uh, so again, what a credit spread would look like would be potentially selling the 70 and then buying the 65. Okay, again, this is on the, the, the weekly expiration. So the weekly expiration, as of right now, of course, the markets are closed, can't really give you the accurate reading. Basically, you can sell it for 90 cents. You're gonna be risking a max loss of basically $410. But if you would move this and go out just one week, and we saw a little bit more open interest, you are gonna be playing a little bit closer to the in the money or, or the within the expected move. Um, you're getting a little bit more premium. The theta decay is still there with that, that spread. Um, if you were more willing to do a credit spread, that's what I would recommend to maybe tell, sell the 70 or even the 65 uh, and the sell and buy the 60. It just comes back to what your risk tolerance or risk tolerance is there, Kelly. Uh, and depending on how um, you want to risk X amount of capital and how you have a, a training plan to kind of help you understand on what's best uh, to execute various trades or options uh, within your plan. And I, I kind of went in crazy detail there, but um, looking here at the chart here, um, again, Chewy was pretty much a high flyer last year. It is coming down here a little bit. It's still trading here below the uh, 144 EMA, which is the green line here. So still below $80. But of course, we know with earnings that can kind of create a very large catalyst and we can get that huge uh, upward momentum and really see this thing pop or it can come back down. Looks like the last earnings was a pretty large up move, but then it kind of gave a little bit back here. And of course, being somewhat of a 
a fast growth kind of company and I, I don't know the full fundamental story on this one uh, on how they're able to grow uh, gross margins and so forth on the on the fundamental side um, and so forth but uh, yeah this is something uh, interesting without a doubt uh, um, as well so if we even go to here and we switch over to the weekly chart this thing it's looking like it wants to turn around but as you know with earnings things are very much a coin flip and I got to do the coin flip. You just never know what could happen, right? So be very careful out there. Next question, Edward's asking to Dear Ken, I wanted to invest in Rocket Labs. They're, they're the only publicly traded rocket company that actually launches satellites to orbit. Um, well, there's other rocket companies. Um, there is Northern Grumman. Um, they actually shoot rockets. Uh, it's this, they bought uh, Orbital SDK many years ago. Now, I think it's maybe a year and a half to 18 months. Um, but yeah, let's take a looky loo. I'm not too familiar with that company. There are, they are short lived SPAC now named VACQ. ACQ. Okay, yeah, so. Edward, I'm pretty sure you know with the the fun stuff that we had with the SPAC attacks and how, um, again, I don't know the whole fundamental story behind this one, and but the chart here could potentially be poised to maybe try to break out and get back above 1050. That's going to be a very key level to see if we do get past uh, uh, 1050 or above. But there's a lot of baggage on this. There's a lot of damage already on this. Just technically speaking, it's very much a downward trend. It's kind of trying to build a base here around that $10 limit. So um, this really is going to be coming into the understanding of the fundamental story on this one and not really the technicals because again, the technicals as of right now are just kind of meandering around that $10 range and potentially need to look for some potential catalyst or something that the market's not really pricing into the market. So uh, if you have a better understanding of that, I think that that could be uh, something interesting to watch. Uh, oh, this is what it's changed to. So it's B, 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 B R, R, K, L, B. Okay. Uh, oh, they're not, oh, they're changing it to, okay, they're changing it. I gotcha. Yeah, so normally you have to be very careful. Uh, the SPAC stuff, a lot of the times those SPACs do get hit once that exchange happens or that the SPAC goes from just a SPAC to actually acquiring a company, there's usually just a sell-off of, of people who are just like, yeah, I'm just forget about it. I, I don't need this in my life or for whatever reasons. Like it, it just, again, it, it just, what, what has happened, that's just a, a thing of nature that we've seen happen where the, the SPAC does get announced and moves forth. Uh, I know the one that a lot of people are talking about is the old CCIV going to Lucid. Uh, um, this is something that we need to be uh, very careful about on this one. Again, Lucid, I've been reading up about this a lot more. Uh, the, the Arizona factory, they actually get, they have the land and so forth and they're building. They're going to be adding like 750 people to the factory. They're actually using the local community colleges and the colleges in the area to help train individuals within this, the newer technology realm of this kind of business. So. Um, but yeah, you, you need to have a really deep, deep understanding of the fundamental story a lot of the times with those things. Um, Bitcoin Success is asking for Rocket, the mortgage company, right? So yeah, Rocket, of course, this was kind of considered one of the, I uh, hate to do the air quotes, but like a meme stock. Of course, these have been very violently trading uh, and very volatile, to say the least. Uh, are very rapid moves up, down, left, right, and just kind of doing roundabouts here. Um, with Rocket here, we're seeing it. Um, we did see kind of hold here around that $16.50 to $16.80. Looking to come up here, potentially making it a, they call it a flag pattern in the technical term, to potentially see if we can get a break above 20 and stay above it. You kind of see here, I have an indicator or an alert. If we see 21.45 above, I think that could really create a, a very steep momentum and really see it could run uh, at that point. But as of right now, Rocket potentially could be basing here around $20.80 to around that 19 
dollars and 34 cents there as well so keep that in mind we'll see when, i don't know if this one plays out if it tries to break lower again maybe would like to see this kind of base out here a little bit and really see a nice movement papa d thank you for the two bucks will amc dip hard i want to buy 10k share um so completely full disclosure there papa d amc I don't think uh, there's only one person in the universe that probably knows what's going to happen to this one. Um, and he doesn't really speak to many people. Um, AMC, it's all very heavily driven on really the supply and demand. And understanding the supply and demand is a Rubik's Cube on steroids. And it's just one moving part changes something else and trying to line up the colors. It, it, the data is not very sufficient with how many shares are actually short AMC and who has who has them, who's able to borrow them, how many times have those shares been borrowed and things like that. I think AMC, if it does come crashing down, Papa D, I think we'll find some support around 40 to $38. If that doesn't hold, we can easily see closing the gap here below 30 to $32. Um, but AMC is definitely going to be one to be very careful with. I kind of want to zoom this one in just a little bit here to the hourly chart that can kind of tell a little bit of a better picture here. You can kind of see here on these huge spurts up again, what really drives this is just uh, an understanding of the short sellers. So the short sellers are trying to sell the, sell the stock short um, by mostly, it seems like any means, any means necessary uh, and they potentially can get slaughtered on it. The thing also, I think I got a report that uh, AMC was taken off uh, a couple listings already, so I could not even buy into it. Like, uh, I think it was Thinkorswim I saw it on, or or uh, not, th yeah, Thinker, or, or uh, what is it, TD Ameritrade. They added it to the restriction list. So it, it was something to be very mindful about. Can it go back up to 70? Sure, why not? But it's all going to be coming down to that supply and demand and that crazy movement that we're seeing here lately. Edward, yeah, thank you, my friend. appreciate it. Rocket is definitely a mess. It, it's, a, it's a very messy chart. Um, hey, buddy, I hope you're doing well. What do you think about CRM? Yeah, CRM, I like like I like what I was doing. Like I haven't I didn't watch it too much after earnings. Um, let me go back to the daily chart here. Um, so CRM, it's kind of been like this like lethargic kind of trading here. Um, you can see here it had earnings uh, a couple uh, days ago, uh, like a week and a half ago, whatever it's been. Uh, had a nice pop higher here, um, but it really did not really transition to uh, really that movement that we want to see. We want to see it at least break uh, that four, uh, $248 range. That's kind of where it was been stuck in. We've seen it, the range here as well kind of been uh, backing out here. Again, these are Fibonacci numbers from the swing high to previous low here. Um, this will look a little bit better once we go into like a uh, weekly chart here. You can kind of see that pattern here. It's It seems like tight consolidation on the daily chart a little bit. On the weekly chart, it looks very rocky, right? Very rocky. But we're finding some support around that 220 to like that 210 range. So within that range, unless something doesn't, the wheels fall off the company, that potentially could be a nice buy zone uh, for a trade idea or selling some premium in that range. But as of right now, it's looking like it wants to potentially try to touch or try to break out above that 248. So again, it's it's in a very large trading zone, but it's something that we need to be uh, well aware of because it has been in that zone basically since uh, uh, of last uh, around Thanksgiving of last year. Isn't that crazy? Like selling premium on that one is fantastic. I don't. Know, I should have done a much better job on that one, but I haven't. <laughs> um, then TC. CF, um, that's the tattoo chef. Yeah, this is one. I've got I've got a lot more questions about this one. 
um, about uh, where it could be going and so forth. We talked about it on like, I think it was like two weeks or maybe three weeks ago. We called maybe a double bottom here around that $17 range, but now we're seeing it really kind of come through here. Um, it has broken slightly past that 2143 range that we talked about. The next range we want to look at for the next staircase higher here, which is a little bit more significant, I think a little bit more difficult for the stock to kind of get through. And that would be basically around that $24.60. Um, you can kind of see here, it's had a tough time uh, of not being able to really substantially get past above that. So we failed once, we failed twice, they're high fastballs, and we just swung and missed at, the, uh, at these potential opportunities to try to break out higher, maybe, Maybe that high heat, we can see this one knock it out of the park and try to maybe uh, get back to that range here uh, above like that $28 range there. So we can see if we can kind of get some love uh, from the trading guides on that one. But uh, definitely an interesting one to watch and be very careful on this one. I'm, I'd be very concerned too as well again on, on any like some crazy short reports coming out on this one. Mm-hmm. Um, TD9175, great name. Um, good evening, Ken. With all the focus on green energy, does RIG have a chance long term? RIG, yeah, RIG is the offshore sh drilling, right? I don't know the full fundamental story here. Um, I don't think oil is going anywhere anytime soon. I know. I love the EVs, you know I love Tesla, you know I love that green energy stuff and fantastic. But I think RIG has an opportunity to break out here. Looking here strictly on the chart here, we're seeing it kind of hold a nice base here around 388 to around 350 and kind of trade sideways here. We're potentially trying to spool up here for a uh, uh, an IV pop or a short-term squeeze. Uh, the level we would want to be looking for is potentially to the next level around 516 to even nearly slightly below $6 here. And the reason why I potentially want to be playing this just because the options on this one are very cheap. Uh, very cheap in the sense of uh, buying one call option. It, it, it's very cheap because it's like it's a... The, the, the stock itself is trading at $4.42, okay? Uh, if I want to buy long-term leaps on this one, if I just want to buy Januaries, or I can buy of 2022 or 2023, look at these prices. They're, they're substantially less, and, the, and then the implied movement in these um, are going to be substantially larger than the stock would it be itself. So that, that would be what I'm looking at. Um, Rig does have a lot of negative kind of... Uh, uh, um, backlog of stuff that they've kind of fought with, but uh, I think it could be a potentially nice little interesting play without a doubt. Um, Bitcoin says his thoughts on DUCO. I don't know that one. Is that, is that, that's not docu, is that? DUCO. I don't know that. Are you talking about Doc U? Oh, so Doc U, of course, fantastic. Like this is the this is the one that we talked about that they actually have a product and it actually does do a flipping fantastic job. Like I like this one a lot. <laughs> the product it has a place. I just don't know about evaluations and things like that. People can kind of. Other people can kind of give it a smack on the chest or whatever about um, this one. We can look here on the weekly chart. This thing has definitely been trading in a range here. Very choppy here, though. Um, again, this was a really crazy play for a lot of people during the pandemic, and it was really game changing on closing houses, changing or signing documents, and really just not having to go into closing uh, uh, settings for uh, houses and things like that. Um, and has really made work a lot easier, right? For this, for, for people to sign and 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 get over with contracts. Um, at the same note, it's been very choppy here. Crazy, fantastic move of this week, this past week. 
on this very large earnings beat, but it's bumping up, guess what? Right into that resistance here around that 235 to like that 240 range. So something you need to be a little bit mindful about. Um, going here back to the weekly chart, I know I'm gonna be switching on you quite a bit here. I wanna kind of draw a pretty significant fib to kind of isolate this issue. So looking here, we've basically been in this trading range right here. Like this has just been bouncing about, like, of course that little hysteria going into the first month of this year was pretty insane. But of course, once everyone found out what the 10 year note was, it just kind of went back down a little bit more chop chop here. Um, on that, I know there's a lot of scribble scrabble here, but this is what we potentially could be looking at. If we do see a significant break above that uh, 235, we would want to see that momentum continue. Um, we do see, again, this is on the weekly chart, we are seeing the 8 EMA trying to get past the 34 EMA. So that could potentially create some tension and more of a rubber band effect, which kind of we've already seen with this very large green candle here. Let's see if that can kind of create a follow through period and really see this one potentially uh, go to the moon, as they say. SB4CB is asking for Fastly. Ooh, another one that was super popular last year. As you can see here on the weekly chart here, this thing was completely gangbusters here, going from like basically $10 all the way to $136.50. Pretty insane, if you say the least. Uh, and just pretty went up in this pretty significant straight line. Was in a trading range again around that 109 to basically. Uh, 109 ish to potentially that uh, 73 of course we have broken past that again some negative earnings that usually is not a great catalyst here um looking here on the short term this one i think i saw this one last week potentially kind of come off on something here one second let me go to the daily chart here yeah kind of bouncing off 40 dollars here we haven't seen 40 dollars since basically uh, this time last year so could have potentially get that next movement and do the completely the same it did last year i highly doubt it um because there was a lot more momentum uh, baked in of last year on uh, these kind of stocks i think this one's kind of lost its edge to be quite honest with you my friend um and again that 40 dollar range is going to be your in initial uh, uh somewhat of a base there um but if that breaks that could be going pretty sick further further south here um some targets we want to see it break above is basically 50 uh and then 52 to 53 dollars to see if that does kind of come up for air there um where do i see piton going to the brand um yeah another one that was very well performing last year um we're seeing this I'm not calling this one a head and shoulders pattern. So if you're not familiar with the technical term of a head and shoulders, so it's basically right here is the neckline. Uh, so this is shoulder one, this is shoulder two, and this is the head right here. Um, this is basically uh, the shoulder line. So once it kind of breaks uh, past that 110, it doesn't really kind of come back from this range here. And it's kind of a, a self-proclaimed story here. Um, if this doesn't hold any support here around 103, we could break past 100 again and make it maybe potentially even go further lower here. Um, but with, again, <clears throat> I think this one's pretty heavily shorted as well, if I remember right. Um, again, there's still some like uh, residual uh, traders or investors in this that are just kind of holding and just kind of seeing how things are playing out at potentially. Um, but as of right now, it's just having a little bit more choppy aspects that I would like to see here. Um, and would like to see it uh, at least, at least hold here around above 100 um, in the short term to kind of see if it kind of creates a base. Because it can, had a, a great, it, it had that herbal uh, announcement of that they're recalling their treadmills. Then they had a pretty good quarter on some sales and, and potential user growth. Kind of made it a rebound here but it hasn't really made that rebound we would like to see to kind of potentially get back uh, into the 120s and into that the range up there. But again, this one could chop for around, a, could chop here for a little bit before we kind of see anything moving. Um, Jeff, we have not done Tesla yet. Let's go look at Tesla. 
of course tesla was not a fun one to have last week and i kind of just didn't want to look at it honestly because it was pretty violently trading here on a weekly basis tesla is a very volatile stock sometimes not really fun to own and kind of seeing your the money kind of fluctuate it's kind of scary at times um on that note here we are finding somewhat of a base here around guess what well oh, i just crossed it out the 550 range so this is potentially a level of support we've seen the ticks come down we we hit it once we hit it twice maybe could we hit a three third three third time um this is kind of a potentially higher low here um again this is all short-term stuff i really want to paint a better picture if we go to the weekly chart here and it kind of gives you a little bit of a better perspective we've seen a astronomical climb in tesla in the past year here right like um and just seeing it getting into the s p 500 break uh, touch that 900 dollars level and just has been kind of going down and very choppy here again i wish i knew where tesla was going i betting that it's going to be going up could it hit some chop a oh, hell yeah it can it can hit some more chop it can go down it can do whatever the heck it wants but i'm looking for some initial pretty significant support coming in uh, uh around 525 to 500 uh and then going into so this is a three-day uh three year max here a uh, three sorry weekly three year chart looking here at that ranges here a little bit of chop here um some people could call this like a uh descending kind of like an angled triangle pattern here uh, maybe getting some chop coming in here maybe going lower here or will it kind of continue to kind of trade sideways and then get that significant pop i think there again i'm being more optimistic on tesla depending on how you view it i think it's really going to be coming down to what kind of coffee tea and donut combination you like because again this is a very risky company at times and um, sadly if you like it or not the the ceo is in the news quite a bit for some dumb things at times um the real deep value squeeze amc isn't a deep value stock gm is up six thousand percent for the year why are you pumping why are you pumping a dumb stock or a real short squeeze like jimmy um i'm not pumping a stock but godspeed to you i don't understand overall a real short-term squeeze like jimmy's i think it's an overall short-term squeeze yes um what's up makeshift um please answer my question if tesla is up 1500 in the last five years and gains us up six thousand percent in the one last year uh why are you pumping non-value stocks like amc um again i think you're misconstruing on what pumping means pumping meaning is i'm telling people to buy the stock and just go forward and go yoloing it uh, i don't actually tell people to buy anything uh, and especially AMC, completely risky. I wouldn't even touch it with a 10 foot pole, my friend. Um, so uh, it's very much a, a stock that is again in the news. People love to talk about it. It's interesting to see on how the, the younger or the uh, retail investors are really kind of giving the middle finger uh, to the folks on the Wall Street. Again, uh, if you know anything there, deep uh, v uh, deep value there, my friend, is that uh, the larger investment banks, they can short basically anything they want um, with really no repercussions. And sadly, uh, the, the, the tides have changed, the, the table has been turned, uh, whatever other kind of uh, dramatic thing you want to put in there is that the folks here on AMC are moving the stock here because it's a battle between the larger investors, the industrial, not industrial, the industry, uh, um, um, the commercial and the larger hedge funds uh, that run billions of dollars. And then you have your smaller investors that have the five thousand to fifty thousand uh, dollar options trading account, uh, and they're being able to buy ten call options, and they're seeing their value go up. So it's not really in that sense. Uh, the AMC uh, pump and dump, the pump and dump schemes. You're maybe misconstruing an understanding of the pump and dump is when someone uh, 
entices people to buy something hey you guys you should buy this milk company because it's the new milk and it doesn't hurt cows blah 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 but i know that the milk is harmless it's harmful uh the cows are actually worse off and blah 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 but i'm still promoting it so the 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 the, the noobs buy the stock and on that rise up you get out of the stock at the same time. That's a pump and dump. And then some kind of fact comes out, uh, facts, and then the stock drops. That's a pump and dump. So uh, that's how that breaks down. Um, J Family says, uh, uh, any thoughts on Drives Hack DS? What's that? I never heard of this one. It's an interesting looking chart, a little choppy here. Um, it's finding some uh, uh, support here coming into the 144 EMA here. Um, let me just zoom out to the weekly chart. Interesting. Kind of in a range here, range bound. I don't know the fundamental story behind this one, but this could be interesting to one to play out. Um, what is this company? Um, Drive Shack is a formerly Newcastle Investment Group is a leisure company. The company is owned and operated by Golf Realtor Leisure and Business. The company is portfolio man of Drive Shack is engaged in developing nationwide network of golf entertainment venues and rentals. Interesting. Okay, so it's a very large golf play. I, I never actually heard of this one. Um, I like it. I'm not gonna write. I want to write this one down and do a little bit more research on the the fundamental side of the story. But uh, if uh, if the options are cheap on this one, which it doesn't look like it, they're pretty pumped up here and they're very. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, yeah, it, thanks for sharing, my friend. That's great. And ba -do -ba -do. Alan, thank you for the five bucks, my friend. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Um, ba -ba -ba. Okay, it looks, looks like some people are joining here. Thanks, guys and like gals for coming out. Um, ba -do -ba -do. Let's see here. Uh, Clover might be fun. BB1050, good reload spot. Yeah, Clover's also been one that's been coming up quite a bit here. So Clover Health was a company that came uh, a SPAC as well. Uh, this is one of the Chmoth Papa Teal's uh, stocks here. Again, very choppy here as well. It's it's kind of a disconnect between what's actually going on in the company. Is it a fundamental play? Is it just a meme stock? Is it just being promoted? Or is it just being bought because it's a sympathy play? Uh, or, or, or is it really investments going into this? So it's very hard to kind of tell. Again, there was that short report that really took it down here from the Hindenburg uh, group. Um, and it hasn't really seen that significant break back above $9 here. It did close on Friday exactly at $9 here. But you can kind of see these very large spikes up. But then, then it really drastically comes back down. And you see these spikes up and comes back down. So there's what it's telling me is that there's no real staying power. It's not like moving higher and then just kind of trading sideways and then kind of creating a stair step higher here. It's not really doing much of anything. And then BB, uh, yeah, BlackBerry. Yeah, this one is a, a weird one. This this actually has news on some fundamental basis, but this thing is definitely somewhat of a meme stock as well. Uh, and seeing these very large, drastic moves higher here, and just kind of seeing that really, uh, uh, really an explosion of volume here is just something that is really uh, uh, putting a tag of. Uh, fear of missing out and just parabolic and just completely insane kind of moves here. Yeah, well, Franklin, you're welcome. That Tesla is definitely going to be one that's going to be choppy. I think most people do understand that one. Sometimes it's difficult for folks to kind of 
maybe take a little bit longer perspective on it. I think uh, once we kind of get past these hurdles, the only thing I have to say about Tesla is the stuff that's coming out of China. Like it's very hard to believe on what's truth, what's what's uh, actually f the facts of our sales dropping eight nine thousand uh, cars a month. It, are, are things really failing uh, and just kind of going under attack there? I wish that it had a little bit more shining uh, light in that sector because again, that is like twenty five to thirty percent of their business. Thank you, Makeshift. Yep, everyone, if you haven't already, I greatly appreciate a like and sub if you haven't already. Definitely love it. Um, love to do more live streams. I actually like interacting with everyone and kind of talking about things live. Because again, I didn't. I never heard of uh, Drive Shack. I didn't hear about that one. I wanted to share two stocks with you guys that I've been looking at. If you guys don't mind, once we kind of go through a couple more questions here. Um, yeah, yeah, Callaway Golf. So this is the one. Remind me, Kelly. This is the one that owns uh, Top Golf, right? Or they own a percentage of Top Golf? Because I was asked when I, went, when I went to my first Top Golf, I was like, they got a a boatload of Callaway stuff here. They must Callaway must be like a partner, or they own half the business. And I remember asking the the manager of the facility, I was like, does Callaway own part of this? They're, they didn't even know. They said they they were like that's a prime partner. Googling around, of course, fixed that. I was like, yeah. They own it, some of it. If, if, I don't know if they sold it or something. It's been a while since I've looked that up, but yeah, yeah, this one is definitely uh, a really pretty much a reopening play. This has, if I if I go to the weekly chart, yeah, this thing hasn't been doing much of anything until the end of the the pandemic and that reopening play really kind of skyrocketing higher here, um, really hitting these key Fibonacci numbers here. We've been trading on thirty dollars for some time and then really seeing it come up here. That's a pretty significant level here on thirty seven dollars. Let's see if we can kind of hold and stay above that because the next moving what we're going to be looking for is really exceeding these higher levels up to full fifty to fifty six dollars and those are pretty far off Fibonacci numbers as of right now. Dave, what's up, my friend? Yeah, SCNS, of course, this one falls in that category. I, I don't want to throw that dagger, but the meme stocks, right? Um, This thing was very heavily moved between this one and BNGO. Of course, this one has also finding a little bit of a base here around that, that uh, $6, $6.30-ish range. Uh, but going back to SCNS, uh, seeing this one kind of uh, uh, been coming in higher here again this one built a nice little base here around the 144 EMA here and then really skyrocketing higher here I, again I don't know if this was on some kind of news Dave is this was this some kind of a, a news or like a, a trial period that went well or something like that um, but that's a nice little uh, a very very a lot of volume coming in that day and that really kind of jacked up that move here but kind of coming into potentially that wall of resistance here. We're kind of that $3 range. We have not really get passed above that on the way down. We did have that $3 range come up here a little bit on the way up here. But of course, with FOMO and that completely uh, 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 crazy uh, outlandish move here that really kind of skyrocketed the price here. And But now it just kind of been, it was trading sideways kind of building a base. Let's see if we can get back above that 295 here and really kind of maybe potentially build a base here. It can even come back down and tap around that 235 to 234 um, and maybe see this kind of like a, uh, a trading pattern in that range before we get that next news higher or potentially lower depending on what uh, actually comes out from uh, different various uh, information from that point. You feel Ford is still a good buy, DI? Um, I love Ford. I've been in Ford for quite some time here. As of right now, um, I would have a hard time purchasing it. Um, looking here, even on the daily chart, it's very, uh, uh, um, what's the word, uh, uh, far off. It's 34, even it's 8 EMA here. Um, I would like, I like to buy stocks when they're kind of trading sideways and doing nothing and in slowly kind of coming down here. I love stocks that just kind of trade sideways for multiple weeks and 
at a time here. Oh, it's on news? Great, Dave. That, that's even better. I like when things pop on news. Let's see if it has any staying power. Um, so Ford, um, same thing here, trading sideways here for some time. Came into some really key Fibonacci levels here around $11.47 here. Um, really, it's going to be a better picture here looking on the weekly chart here. And then really just seeing it rocket ship higher over the past three and a half, four weeks here. Again, with the Ford uh, F-150 or their, um, what are they calling the, what is the truck called? Oh, shoot. Uh, uh, the Lightning. Lightning truck. Um, and then you have the, uh, of course, the the Mustang, the SUV. That's kind of like a, a Model Y competitor in, the, in that sense, the the midsize SUV kind of category. In that point here, um, with that very drastic move higher here, potentially we could see it hold here around sixteen to seventeen dollars here to kind of just trade sideways here. But potentially looking for some higher targets around twenty dollars. That's what I'm looking at for uh, this year because I have some pretty far out options uh, that I bought a long time ago, but I had the January options and I still have those $10 calls when that stock was at 10. Um, you can see here on how much volume was traded on that day. Holy moly. You can see how much open interest there is there as well. Um, I think I did it on a video many, 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 many months ago, um, highlighting some very interesting options activity around that time frame. Um, but yeah, the expected move for us the year is basically around five dollars. So if everything goes well, I think that uh, Ford will be great. Uh, appreciate that. Um, workhorse potentially short squeeze setup. I think workhorse is going to be a more difficult one to look at. Um, I have to be completely honest on this one. Um, I don't know on how what they do. I, I know that they are kind of competing in the EV space. Um, I know that they lost the contract to the USPS, uh, the US United States Postal Service, um, and they don't make too many trucks, if I remember correctly. Um, it's kind of been kind of trading sideways here a little bit. Um, of course, with that very horrible announcement coming in the end of February, it has been trading down ever since then, kind of well breaking below that uh, $10 range. I know Kathy Wood was in the stock for quite some time here and was promoting it in that sense. Um, seeing kind of pop up here, I don't know if this is on data or some kind of news event um, or just a meme here as well uh, on this stock here. Again, if it's a short squeeze, yes, can it can potentially go, but again, I don't want to be betting solely on a short squeeze. So, and I just don't quite understand the fundamental story because if it is a short squeeze, I have to be very careful because I might own their shares, if you know what I mean. Um, Earl G, thank you. What's up, my friend? How you been? How you been? How you been? Um, thoughts on FireEye and Chewy? Thanks. Yeah, FireEye. I haven't looked at that one for a little bit. If you don't know, if you haven't, you've been sleeping under the rock. Ransomware and just hackers have been hacking everything. They ha they hacked the uh, the Colonial Pipeline just a couple uh, weeks ago, um, and there's just cyber attacks have just been very rampant, especially uh, with everyone working from home and just spam attacks and and phishing emails have just skyrocketed up there as well. Um, with FireEye. Uh, this is within like the uh, uh, space of security of networks, computers, and just data overall. Um, very interesting play because again we had that Russian stuff come out here um, and just kind of trade sideways here for a little bit. I don't know what happened here. Some potential gap down here, but we are hitting a pretty key level of support which we've seen here before here. So that eighteen dollars and thirty four cents, we start closing below eighteen potentially and actually get a, a very aggressive red candle down here, we potentially could be breaking lower here and maybe touching to 16. But as of right now, I don't know the full story behind this one. Maybe kind of see if it kind of maybe tries to build a base here above $18 here and maybe kind of starts making its way back up to 21. Um, I don't know the full story behind this one though. Um, and then you asked about Chewy. Yeah, we talked about Chewy a little bit in the details. Uh, towards the beginning of the video and talked about, I think it was Kelly was asking about how do, how potentially should I, he was thinking about selling some puts 
uh, for the earnings play coming out. And of course, we know with earnings, we already looked at the expected move. It's basically expected move about $7 here. So that could potentially get it back above that $80 range, which we'd like to see here. Of course, if you're bullish on it and really kind of seeing that uh, price kind of drive up here, um, we are seeing a little bit of chop chop coming through here. Um, especially since that, that pullback uh, in that February timeframe with a lot of these growth stocks and just trading sideways for quite some time here and being a little bit more negative under pressure here, um, kind of finding some little bit of a ground here and maybe seeing it get back up here to that $80 plus range, again, depending on on sales and things like that. Um, definitely, again, with earnings, you know that it's a coin flip. So just please don't play straight earnings and buying calls because that the theta and the and then just the overall dying of uh, uh, of that momentum could really kill you in those option prices. Man, do, 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 do. let's see here. Um, can you take a look at TSM? Thanks. Uh, you're welcome, and thank you for using manners. I appreciate it. Uh, TSM, of course. A Taiwanese a semiconductor. I think this is a fantastic company. Excuse me. They have technology that no one else has, and they're building facilities, guess what, in the United States. So, uh, and they're training people in the United States to understand their technology. We've been trading this one some, I think, well below uh, $60, because again, if I go further out here, yeah, we got into this one around $50 here. Um, I got out of majority of the shares at 80 did not see this big ass move coming here. I'm going to be straight with you guys. Um, did not see that coming. I should have held it because it, it was holding the eight EMA here on the weekly chart fantastically. Um, this move right here on the weekly side is looking okay to me. It is kind of bouncing off that 34 EMA here, which could potentially creating that next catalyst to that gets that move uh, jump higher here. Um, we'll see on how that does come through here. Switching back to the daily chart here, that really is kind of a really key level here. So again, with this kind of like a trading box here, if you want to look at it, it's just kind of trading sideways here. So basically around this like 125 area to basically that 110 area. So within that $15 uh, dollar range here, that is something that we're going to be looking for trading, uh, uh, potentially to remain in trading. So the premiums are probably not too expensive on this one because we just recently had earnings, um, but something that I could be looking for. Again, if it builds a strong base here and stays above that 144 EMA here, that's definitely what I would want to be looking at on seeing some support kind of come through there. Um, Paul saying, oh, and they got, uh, SNS got FDA approval within 60 days trial. Nice, good. Um, Ken, what's your take on space next week? Because Wall Street's bet stocks recently, uh, there have been good news recently and the good promising news in the near future. Um, so we traded space a little bit um, before it was the cool thing. Um, we bought it around that $16 range. It was more like a, a whim. It was kind of like a Ken style YOLO where I just bought a, just a handful, small handful. Little fantastic move here. I actually kind of like the pattern continuously here. Um, it is getting a little bit of chop chop here. So if we go here to uh, Tastyworks, so this is what I use for trading options. And if you're interested, I got an affiliate link down below. If you want to open an account of $2,000 or more, um, you have a choice of selecting 100 uh, uh, shares of a stock that they choose from their pool or 10 options there as well. So this one really makes it easy for options. It's really, really remarkable made for uh, trading for options. Um, as you can see here, we already had earnings. Again, we did have that great news where they were able to uh, get to the uh, outer limits of space uh, and within the Earth's gravitational pull still and made a success. That's actually, uh, uh, again, a really strong accomplishment for uh, Virgin Galactic there. Um, we are bumping into some potential resistance here on the chart here. So that's gonna be around that $32.80 here. We're kind of bumping into it. We're seeing a little bit long candle wicks here, meaning does it mean that it's gonna fail here? No, it's still kind of moving higher here. You have the pink line here, which is the eight EMA here. Just continue to try to create that momentum to move higher here. We have the 34 EMA kind of coming around here as well. So 
relatively speaking here, this looks like it potentially could be a nice little pattern here uh, and see this one play out here. But we want to be very mindful about that 3280 ish dollar range because we've seen it kind of trade like above that, but we've seen it fail here and kind of come back lower here. We do have a little bit more momentum behind us because we did accomplish uh, that docking or the, the in orbital space um, on that news there. So I think maybe I'm not going to be putting in all my cards with the Wall Street bets, folks, because again, um, not saying everyone's an idiot over there, but. Uh, you have to really understand on what you want to buy into and the reasons why you uh, want to own the stock or the options for whatever reason. Um, did you buy as you feel needed to be happy? I think there may be a good upside overall value in AMC. Yeah, AMC is, is in a whole different universe, guys and uh, gals. AMC is just trading in a completely... Uh, non-regular trading uh, uh, pattern because uh, once you hit that gamma squeeze and you just hit those uh, very aggressive short sellers that are that need to cover here that just kind of creates this really large explosion in that burn effect that really can last uh, for quite some time here and really kind of uh, go to these levels that no one could have thought of So looking here on the Fibonacci tree, if we can continue to see this move here, um, the next level to break out, if we do get to $72 again for AMC, we're gonna be looking for $91, just FYI. Let's see, let's see what happens. Um, Kelly is asking for NIO. Yeah, NIO, of course, the Chinese competitor, Tesla. This thing has been trending a little bit better than Tesla. It did kind of get, the, again, that market move down in February here, but it has been trading sideways here for quite some time here. Um, again, we're still talking about February timeframe, so nearly four months here, just kind of just chop, chop, chop here, chop, 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 um, and just really not really going anywhere here. Um, we're potentially seeing some pretty strong resistance around that $45 range, so let's see if it has that momentum to even break above that range there. Uh, and then, yeah, I wanted to share some stocks that I was looking at. Um, again, they're not going to be short-term stocks. They're going to be a little bit more longer-term hold, potentially, um, which is going to be MOS. So this is the one we talked to one oh, quite a bit before um, on the channel here and within the Discord here. I think this one, even which is with the last recent earnings here, you can just kind of see this pattern one pattern just continue to play out here. It's coming down to that 34 EMA here. It's around, around that $35 range here. Uh, potentially want to be adding into this one. Uh, I think I'm pretty much com not completely out of it, but I have a little bit left here um, because again, we're hitting that previous high around 37. Um, I'm looking for this one to kind of continue with this trend and continue holding the 8 EMA here on the weekly chart. So we're looking here at the weekly side to kind of, kind of maybe trade sideways around that $37.50 to $37 range and maybe make its way back up, uh, make its way up to $45 there. And another one that I was just looking at was HAYW, someone uh, messaged, uh, saw it messaged, and I never heard of it before. So it's a newer stock that kind of came uh, came out. I think they said something to do with um, pool equipment. Yeah, yeah, pool equipment automation systems for pools. Of course, we had that crazy freeze in and ten, ten or in Texas. Of course, everyone summertime pool supplies. There's a backlog of pools going wazoo uh and and the shortage of just pool parts have just made a pretty much a short squeeze in a set in itself on pool supplies and just really kind of creating a very uh supply and demand or a uh, uh supply limited uh market here and i haven't done too much looking into this one as well um, but this one just lo looks look like it looks pretty interesting to potentially see this one uh, play. I don't think it has um, options. Oh, it does have options. Okay. But they are not very liquid at all. So probably not going to be touching those. But uh, those are the two stocks that I was looking at, Kelly. Um, again, if you haven't already, I've got a link to the Discord you want to join. Check out. I greatly appreciate it uh, if you want to check this one out as well. 
Um, another one I wanted to look at was, let's see here, where was it? Volume. Um, Cisco was one. So Cisco, um, I kind of talked to one about last, uh, last Sunday, um, was basically around, it has been holding this range here around 52. So if we go back to the weekly chart here, I kind of like this flag pattern here. It's really building a pretty strong base here to maybe see it reach to that $58 range. Um, it looks like President Biden has completely nixed any kind of investment in um, the Chinese uh, Huawei uh, semiconductor or broadband kind of um, uh, technology company. So Cisco can kind of just uh, sidestep in there and take some of that business, whatever. Um, but Cisco this is one play that I'm looking for as well. I was slightly in the Nike here. Nike is potentially kind of creating some kind of a, a base here. Um, basically more of a tighter base between 140 and 130 here and just kind of just trading sideways here looking for this the 129 to 130 dollar range potentially be a pretty substantial level to hold here that is also falling into that 34 ema you got the 78.6 percent fibonacci move here so a lot of strong indicators that could potentially looking here we have a squeeze building up we have basically implied volatility at a little bit much of a low here um so some pretty interesting indicators that we could potentially see some kind of pop uh, within the old Nike here uh, to the upside of what we're looking for potentially would be initially around that uh, all time high around 47 to $48 in that range there. So on that one, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't have any further questions or any comments or anything like that, um, please put them in the, the, the comment section right now. Uh, if you haven't, don't have anything else, if you're just too shy, which is totally fine, just make your way uh, on over to the fantastic Discord that we have, um, which is down below here. Um, you can kind of see, uh, we talk about all kinds of things. Um, we talk about uh, trading, we talk about Costco stocks, we talk about value stuff, we talk about all kinds of different stuff. We, we love our Forrest Gump memes and things like that, um, but this is just stuff we want to be uh, uh, just looking at uh, and just having a lot of fun with and just having a really nice community to kind of talk stocks and just uh, be, be very mindful and be uh, encouraging other folks and being able to ask the, the silly questions or the basic questions that I'm sure a lot of people had when they first started out trading and being somewhat of a, a friendly environment and not really uh, 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 an ego driven environment from that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, on that note, thank you from the bottom of my heart again for coming out on Sunday as well and spending the time with me looking at stocks, looking at charts. Greatly appreciated. Um, on that note, guys, have a great evening. I will catch you guys sometime next week. We'll do a live stream or something else. Um, I am working on some kind of video on trying to compare. Uh, selling premium to be in the casino so I think that's that right there could potentially kind of be a game changer for some people's mindsets of being a, a casino on selling premium and options so kind of want to be playing that game or, or, or play helping explain that in a fun way so on that note, uh, stay tuned. Again, thank you guys from the bottom of my heart for coming out. I want to thank Franklin and uh, uh, and, and, and Papa, Papa D uh, for the donations tonight. And again, guys, catch you guys on the flip side. Peace.